Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Alex with the Linux Tube. Today we're going to take a look at a new OS that, well, it's not a new OS, it's been around for a while. But it's one that I've never seen before or reviewed, so it's new to me, and more than likely new to you guys. Uh, it's called Red Core OS. It is a Gen 2 based OS, so if you want to cheat on the install of Gen 2 and get a legitimate Gen 2 KDE experience completely set up for you through a script that, well, it's actually a Calamari's installer. This may be the distro for you. And here it is. This is the login manager to which you are met with. It's the SSDM S DDM login manager that's typical with the KDE experience. So I'm going to type in my super duper strong and complicated password. This is a virtual machine. I've given it uh, six cores and four gigs of RAM. And this is what you're met with, right? Post install. So uh, apparently it uses MailSpring for the mail client and not Thunderbird. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that out. And let's open up the old Firefox browser here and let's go to Red Core. OS Linux, Red Core Linux right there. Red Core Linux Project Home, let's go there. It's at redcorelinux.org. What is Red Core? Well, Red Core Linux is a distribution based on Gen 2 Linux testing branch, uh, which uses a hardened profile by default. It is a fork and a continuation of the now defunct Kogion Linux. Kogion Linux itself was a distributable based initially on Sabion Linux, which is another form of a Gentoo-based Linux uh, distribution. Gihyun Mahmoud, member of Rugiant Development Group, uh, forked it and Red Core Linux was born. Core Linux shares the same idea as a defunct end sister, to bring the power of Gentoo Linux to the masses. It aims to be a very quick way to install Gentoo Linux compatible system without spending hours or days compiling source from code. Because if you've ever tried to compile Gentoo Linux, well, yeah, you, you know, you, some people will take months to get it installed and it is definitely not something for a newbie. Uh, or a new to Linux user, whereas this can allow a new to Linux user to get into it, start using it already set up. The difficulty is going to be with using the uh, Emerge Package Manager to uh, emerge things uh, because it's it's a whole different beast of it unto itself. But uh, for that, I mean, it's it, this is a is a quick and dirty way to get a savvy Linux user into this. So for who, in fact, here we go. Red Core Linux targets casual laptop desktop users and to some extent workstation power users so they're basically saying this is definitely not for noobs this is mainly more for regular linux users who are semi you know casual tinkers and or power users so it will nicely fulfill any gaming multimedia office and internet browsing needs anything more than that then you're into the full-on need drink skills of comp compilation because that's the whole idea in gen 2 linux is uh what's in that box is exactly what you put in that box very similar to arch to vanilla arch in that retrospect you, you know what you put in it is what you, is what is in it you know and you can't complain about anything because it's all on you so if there's any dependencies to something that you need to install you need to go grab those install them as well as the package that you want to run so that would be the same concept behind this gen 2 regular gen 2 however this one has a lot of those already put in for the common stuff and used so in a little bit we'll take a look and see what's actually in here so uh, how it's built red core linux is built from gen 2 linux stage 3 which is a standard gen 2 linux install we then add a kernel a bootloader and a few other things like dbus and interat interat in it ram fs generate the linux tube dot shop you know that's why i'm here got some water bottles the Linux Tube water bottle, official Linux Tube coffee cup. You go to the Linux Tube.shop, check out all our new gear. We got a couple different graphics going on. We're going to be updating stuff all the time t shirts, socks, some sweatpants there, you know, whatever you cool kids are into. Get on there and check it out, man. Thank you. Alex, where'd you go, man? Alex! Hey! 
So, but it's basically they want you to use OpenRC. That's their standard default uh, init system. And so we have the core of Red Core Linux, Gen 2 Linux Stage 4, if you will. We then squash FS this Stage 4 and use it as a base for everything. Va Vassal, our Swiss Army knife, makes use of the compile packages. So that's their compiler against and create the ISO images. So that's how that works. Uh, if you go to the top, you've got their homepage, which is where we're at. News, anything new that's coming down. If you want to download, you click on the download. It takes you there, and then you can download them right here. Uh, the Alp, they have different mirrors, two, uh, two different mirrors. They got the Alpix and the Yandex mirror. So you can go there. Uh, forum, if you have questions or you need any knowledge, here you go. Tutorials and practical guides. So this will give you little cheat sheets how to go to. I mean, this is a well, well done uh, web page documentation. They have their own separate documentation that you can go to here. You got the main page, recent changes, randoms, the help media wiki, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, view source, uh, discussions. And then you have bug tracker. So here you can um, file a bug with them, search for any bugs that you may be experiencing, or open a, and of course, you can open an account with them. Uh, if you plan on living there, uh, Git repositories uh, right here. You this is very nice because you have the Git repositories for all of it. Of course, I got a donate page, which I always you know recommend. You know, definitely donate to people because you know uh, these people spend a lot of time uh, doing what they do and without a lot of pay. Like myself, I have no corporate sponsors whatsoever, and I do this entire channel all of my own. I I finance everything, so if you could go to Patreon.com, the Linux tube over there, and uh, become a patron, I'd greatly appreciate it. And then, of course, there's contact here. So if you want to contact Redcore, you can do it through here, through Facebook, or through the IRC chat over on the Libera channel. Which I'm... So that in itself is the web page for Redcore. So now let's take a look at Redcore. Of course, if you need help, you can click here for ask for help. Oh, I don't know why that didn't work, but whatever anyhow uh, it's probably because uh it doesn't matter either way you can there's help there this is a virtual machine it could be something with the virtual machine so this is like your standard kde desktop of course you got your kde panel on the bottom with your app launcher then your pinned startup uh or applications you know quick start applications uh kde integration forever for your plasma i mean uh, for your browser and you got your clipboard your volume um most uh, recent device which is this is your usbs that kind of stuff your network uh, uh, manager applet and then of course you've got your uh, notification center along with anything that for updates oh wow i believe this uses the yeah it's got the discover um software for the kde software and i believe it uses a uh the package manager sisyphus right here yep sisyphus gui so this is where you would be like the apt package manager or, you know, um, the synaptic package manager. Yeah, it's just like synaptic, you know, you can type in here what it is that you want and it'll search packages and you mark them for installation and there you go. Um, like, let's try OBS. Right here. It's under the group. See, that's the thing that's different about... Uh, Gen 2, it, like when you're doing emerge, uh, like the command in the command line would be emerge dash da, or dash dash, you know, minus symbol, minus symbol, or dash dash ask. And then you would put in media slash video forward slash OBS studio. And then you would hit enter. Then it's going to scour its repository come up with that it's going to give you all the dependencies and everything that needs to install just like you would with any other package manager and then you at the bottom say is this what you want to install yes and then that's how you do it you have to know the category group that it's in uh to do it by command line whereas this it just scours them for the obs studio and it does it that way so if you're new to the gen 2 uh world installing gen 2 when i've compiled it myself in the past, uh, it has been one of those situations where it does take a minute to do things. It's kind of slow. And so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of this. It's not going to hurt anything because um, I don't want to deal with it and wait for it. But uh, but anyhow, I mean, there are, I think, some steps that you can take 
in the compilation process. See, that's the thing. When you're installing Gentoo, uh, you could change the the use make flags and the C make flags uh, to, to, to specify your processor, the amount of cores you want to use to compile stuff with, and what it's going to eliminate as far as only install open RC stuff instead of also scraping for system D stuff and any other uh, stuff that, that you don't want to have in there. Um, so you can actually fine tune it down to where installs componentry and or not componentry, but uh, software uh, that actually target specific for your processor, RAM volume, and programs that you have installed already. So that's the beauty of Gen 2 is it actually streamlines everything so that everything is faster, but it takes a lot of time to set that up in the beginning when you're first starting out. And this system, because it doesn't know what you're installing it onto, what processor core or chipset you're using or RAM that you're using or any of that stuff or what you want or don't want installed, this actually installs it all the, the the make flags so and the use flags so that that may be in the make ops so make ops is the part that you will configure in your make config file to uh dedicate how many amount of processors you want to use uh for the compilation process so that's just a little bit on the background of gen 2 and how that's working so anyhow so that's the sisyphus uh Pa uh, package manager uh under development you've got qt5 designer because once again kde is based off of qt uh for education they've installed mathematics which is libre math and then science they've got libre math uh games it comes with lutris and steam already installed uh graphics uh it has uh fontage uh gimp gwenview which is your picture viewer um, LibreOffice Draw and Ocular, which is a PDF viewer. Internet, you've got Chromium installed. I installed Mozilla Firefox because it didn't come with that, so I had to install that. Then you have uh, Qubit Torrent and, of course, st so wow, weird, and Steam. Uh, under Multimedia, it's got UVC, which I've never seen or heard of, but it's I may have not paid attention in some of the other major videos because I use certain things and I focus on and that's what I look for. Everything else is just all random fodder in there sometimes. Um, also, it's got K3B. Now, that's interesting that it has K3B installed because K3B, <laughs> who actually burns CDs anymore when you just write stuff to USBs? But either way, that's what it is. It's a CD burner. Uh, MPV player, uh, phone on, audio and video, that's your player. Uh, OMMP, I'm not sure what that is, or is that QMMP, I'm not sure, and then VLC Media Player, that is what everybody uses, that's between MPV Player or M Player and M VLC, I think those are your top three media players that everybody goes to, so uh, pretty much so you can get rid of all of this and just use MP or VLC and it'll play everything for you, it'll play video, it'll play... Uh, mp3 you can actually stream radio stations from it you can uh actually stream uh internet ip tv through it too as well using the m38 m3u 8u format so um then there's office they have libre office completely installed uh for settings you've got your system settings which is your standard kde system settings if you click on it uh although it's a little bit different than the, so this must be Plasma. What is this? Uh, help. About system settings. Ah, yeah, that's why. It's version Plasma 5.22.5, so it's an older version of Plasma. Uh, it's not like your newer one that opens up to your, like, yeah, see, this doesn't have the global themes or anything. So um, you may you may go ahead and update that if you need to, if it's available, it may not be. And that's why they, they it's the hard. Of course, this is your standard settings where it lets you adjust everything from startup and shutdown screen all the way to your displays and monitors this is where you adjust it to 1080p. The media, of course, power management, all that good stuff. And of course, your system information. Yeah, see, it's 5.22 plasma, KDE framework, Harden, um, the uh, red core uses a X server and of course as you can see the four gigs of RAM with the six processors I gave it uh, and that's it for that so that's under the settings um, and then under system you have your Avahi 
Uh, Belena Etcher comes with it comes with the Discover, it comes with Dolphin, H Top. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're running. Wow, from memory we're using one gig. That's because I've opened a couple of things, so I don't know what it does at idle uh, when on a fresh boot. So it might be probably just a little bit under a gig. I would say maybe seven hundred somewhere in that area, you know. But it is KDE, so sometimes KDE will open things. But this is an older version of KDE. So it may open a little bit more. I know that the newer KDE, the 5.25 and the 5.24s, they are running um, way less from from boot. So that KDE's gotten a lot better on that. And it's only using like two percent of a processor, so it doesn't. It's not using a lot. And here's all the stuff that it's running in the background. So, but anyhow, let's take a look at your. Um, system usage okay you have info center partition manager console which is a standard kde terminal uh sisyphus we've already taken a look at system monitor which is very nice graphical user interface that kde gives you for your system eight for htop it's a version of htop for kde Historic view of your hardware um and of course these are processes that are running right now so either way um, that's a look at the KDE system monitor, which is a little bit more target specific and has a little bit more within it. Uh, this is cool because it's got a unit boot and static, so you can actually uh, install via internet into a, onto a, a USB drive. So they have three image writers. They have Belena, Belena they have unit Bootin, and they have Wo USB. Utilities, you have Arc which is your uh, compression file manager, KCalc, KFine, and KWrite, which is a text editor. And of course, the power session is your startup and shutdown. So that's, I mean, it's your typical standard uh, full-on KDE desktop environment on a Gen 2-based application. In a nutshell, my thoughts on this are actually quite simple, and it's that you can install and run successfully Gen 2 as a savvy but not good in the command line install of Gen 2. This is a way to cheat it because um, you can obviously with KDE, that's the glorious part of it. You can customize it to look at what you want. You know, you can literally install this and run this and customize it 100 percent. And you're actually it's built on the actual stage three of Gen 2. It's not a fork of it or anything. It's a fork of another operating system that use the stage three as well so i mean technically you are fully installing gen 2 on here so it's a good way of doing that let me know what you guys think if you guys have got any comments if you use this before if you haven't used this before like i said this was new to me never seen it before till today i discovered it because i was trying to find other gen 2 derivative things because apparently fedora and gen 2 seem to be the new buzzwords in the community and offer this because i know the other traditional gen 2 ways arduous at best and that's a positive saying so anyhow like leave it comment below smash that like button in this to let me know that um it is definitely uh something to what you like uh and if you have any comments or suggestions for anything else you'd like me to do please uh comment that below thanks so much uh you guys keep doing what you do keep on linux again have a great day